All right. We talked about pH yesterday. We're going to talk about pH all day today. It is the negative log base 10 of the H plus concentration. Good enough? Why not? Next. Boom. All right. Well, let's try this. If the pH is 2.65, could you solve now? And you'll want a, a nicer calculator. Could you solve? And by the way, I'm tired of putting them away. If you borrow my calculator, you put it back at least here. I have to put them away every single day. All right. If the pH is 2.65, you tell me what the H plus and the OH minus is. Ready, go. Yep, just the LOG on your calculator will get you what you want. What? That's only if it's seven. If the pH is seven, that's true. But other than that, no. Have you graded all the tests? What? Have you graded all the tests? I have graded exactly zero of the tests. But that's what weekends are for. You know, you only have one shoe on. <laughs> What? Uh, no. Between the time, I know you don't care. You're like, whatever, it's your job. But since Monday, <laughs> I've had almost zero time. I like I was at a track meet last night till about eight forty-five, cleaning up, and then this morning at five, I woke up to go do driver's ed. And that's my life right now. Mm -hmm. 5.30. See, I was asleep. I don't remember. Can you really call No, heavens no. <laughs> no. Grace Ellis and I think McKenna Shepard. I don't use her first name because I'm scared. Something Shepard. It's, you know that point in your relationship where it's too late to ask them again what their first name is? We, yeah, I'm there. So I just go with Shepard. It's Kaylee's little sister, who I think is McKenna, but I haven't, I haven't sent that. Swimmer. Is it McKenna? Yeah. Okay. Okay, are we ready? It shouldn't take long, so if it's taking this long, let's do it together. Okay, please pay attention so this is easier. To find this, we use the inverse log. We take 10 and we raise it to, this is the inverse log of the negative pH value. So we take 10 and we raise it to negative 2.65. Did anyone get that? I want it in scientific notation. All right. And it doesn't have to be, but a, we're in science, so we, we try a little bit to do that. Okay. Now, there are two ways to figure this one out. It's up to you which one. One of them, to me, requires less typing. So this is how I do it. You don't have to do it. I take 14 and I subtract 2.65. This is, I'll tell you how this comes about here in a second. What's this answer? 11.35. And then I take 10 and I raise it to negative 11.35. Did you type it? Yeah, Marvel. Twenty-eight. 
12? Okay. Now that is one way to do it, but most of you won't do it that way. Did anyone do it a different way? Did anyone have any idea how to do it? Okay, well, yesterday was point was. Yep. Okay, yesterday, can I look at your notes? Yeah, they're all different page. Okay, let me see something here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Barely, no wonder you couldn't find it. Um, There's an equation that says Kc is H3O times whatever, or Kw is always equal to one times 10 to the negative 14. So it's called the ion product constant. The concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus always equals that. So, yep, you would take to find OH, you would divide this by 2.2 times 10 to the negative, what was it? The H plus earlier? Second? Third? Okay, type that into your calculators. Yeah, I had 4.47. To me, that is the exact same number. Not negative 18. If you did that, you didn't parenthesize the denominator. So you got what answer? Negative what? Now, this is slightly different. It's pretty much the same thing. E, that means extended or exponential or exponent. Okay, both those answers, and this, whatever, it's just rounding, whether we did it one way or the other, both of them are pretty much the same answer, right? Okay, so there's, there's two ways I'm gonna teach you how to do it. Yes, Judah. No, not really. It's because the ion product constant from yesterday. Maybe I didn't teach it. Oh, really? Oh, weird. Okay, so let's see. Oh, 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 that's weird. Okay, so look right here. This is from yesterday. My fault for assuming that when I say something, you learn it. That's my bad. This is an important equation. The H plus time, the concentration times the OH minus concentration always equals one times 10 to the negative 14. So, we, we will always be given one of these two. And to find what we want, it's always equal to one times 10 to the negative 14 divided by the given. This is called the ion product constant. All right, or the self ionization product. Either one of those are fine. It comes from KW. When we have both of these equaling negative seven for a neutral, that's where we get the 14. Temperature changes, but I have never in any class I've ever taken or any, any uh, AP test I've ever seen, they've never changed the temperature for pH. It's haunted it's resonating okay now shh, i need to be on this slide okay 
this, I need you to pay attention. We found the, P, we gave you pH and I was able to find H plus by using this direction, right? There's another relationship here. If I have the pH plus the pOH, it will always equal 14. Now, these are definitely related to the previous equation. It's seven plus seven, because a negative log, if they were neutral of seven would be seven plus seven is 14. Okay, so this, the first way I did it is the way I do it. You don't have to do it my way, but it gave me this was 2.65, is that right? That was my given. And so that plus a number equals 14. So then I said, all right, I will find POH because I can use POH to find the OH. And so this was 11.35. with me so far okay so then to find the concentration of these i now would take 10 raised to the negative 2.65 and then to find the concentration of hydroxide that equals h plus this will be hydroxide 10 raised to the negative poh both of those work. Both directions will tell me what my concentrations of each of them are. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. Tons of kids, though, do what John did, and they don't parenthesize right, and they get negative 18. Is that what you had? And he won't do it again, but like, okay, he might. But if you do it this way, you usually don't have it wrong. Yeah, you keep wanting to force it into being the most basic, but it has nothing to do with that. It's the range of the pH scale, but not like. It really isn't, but 99% of it is between 1 and 14. So it means it's between 0.1 concentration and 0.14 zeros and a 1. That's what it means. And there's some that are outside this range, but generally in water, you will always have it in one of these concentrations. What? 0.1 is extremely acidic. 0.001 is really big. So when we did H plus plus OH, Four, four point five four. Yeah. This, this right here. This. This is the concentration of the hydroxide. Oops. Because they're rounded different. They're, I know they are a little off, but they're, they're good enough. Both processes will work. So what you guys did is when you found this number, you probably just, I don't know, did you type 2.2 or did you use your calculator answer to do it? So if we really, well, before I say this out loud, let me double check here. Because he's very polite. I, I like it a lot. Give me 30 seconds. Oh, 
Okay, here's the deal, Judah. If I, this 2.2, where was that one? This 2.2 is really 2.2387211. If you plug in what the real value is here, you get 4.4668. The other one's more accurate. So there, like, if you guys aren't doing it, you should always use the answer to your equation in your next equation. To do that here, so let's say I want three divided by my answer. If it was this answer, I just hit second answer. But if it was that one up there, you just arrow up to that and hit enter. And then you have it. You're, I guarantee it has it. So that's why they were different, but they're really the same. Okay, will you, we're going the other direction now. Will you solve those three that are left based on the notes we just took? What? Out of love, of course. Out of love. Okay, here we go. This is the route that I would take personally. I would first go here and then I would go here and then I would go there. It, it doesn't matter what route you take, but that's the route I'm going to take. So to find, this is supposed to point at pH, by the way. To find pH, I take the negative log of the H plus, which is what was given to me. So I take the negative log of 6.8 times 10 to the negative eight, and I got 7.16. All right, which means pOH is? And then I take this and raise it to the negative 6.84. And then I'm ready to roll. All right, what did you get for your exponent? Negative 23. Okay, negative 23. That can't work. <laughs> there was some sort of parentheses problem. Look right here. This is a tip for you from now on. These numbers right here always add to either four or 13. Oh, I'm an idiot. So, you know, I was right 13, 14, or 15. If they don't add to one of those three right here, just the exponents, you did something wrong. Oh, sorry. Well, it's the same number. They just circled them wrong. Right here and right here. I just circled them in the wrong spot. What? I don't give a crap, Judah. We're like seven months in and I haven't given a crap since. Haven't I lost it on you many times over the same thing? John does the same thing. If I write it on the board within 10% of the right answer, I'm going with it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Wait, but don't they always in like a couple? Whatever your calculator says, like if this was 0 0.002238 and it was the one I gave you that, be 2.2. 2. 2.23 times 10 to the whatever, negative third. Like you should be specific, but if someone in the audience yells 6.8 and then Judah gets fired up that it's 6.84, I'm just saying, I don't care today. 
You 2.24, you would be fine. You have plus or minus one on the last sig fig. Go. Oh my god. How do I hurt? We'll go over sig figs eventually, but not now. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay, here we go. What is the pH in word form? What's the pH of that? What's the conjugate base of that? And what is the concentration with the pH of that? Ready, go. All right, who's done? Okay, two or three of you. All right, we ready? I'm ready. pH is the negative log of that value, right? And it's equal to 3.3. Let's be very specific. What's the next number? Okay, so we're going to do that right now. So look, Cooper, there are two sig figs here. So this would be 3.3. No, not if they were here. We ignore them at the front. Okay, the conjugate base is pretty simple. It's CO minus. Yeah, that's fine. I wrote that. Okay, it's okay. I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> I'm just saying the right answer. It's CL minus. The water would act as the normal base as this dissolved. So the conjugate base can always be found by going like this. Oh, there it is. Yep. <laughs> wow, one freak out at a time. Who's first? Then it's not an acid. Next. Right, an acid has to be able to donate a proton, which is an H. 
Well, it could be at the end. That's fine, but it has an H. Judah. Just C L minus. Next. Okay. How do we find this? How many sig figs are right here? Four. So my answer should technically have four answers in scientific notation. Someone tell me what it is. What's after the three? A four. So that's good enough. So we will go times 10. Whoops. To negative 11. Do these count right here as sig figs? No, they're place holders. They're telling you how many places you go before you get to that. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I feel like I want to move on. Okay, now this is the non-math. It's the acidic basic or neutral character of a solution can be measured and reported using the pH scale. I, I, you can read this, I'm gonna go fast. pH is shorthand for the concentration of the hydrogen ion. All right, the concentration of H plus is always a number raised to 10 to an exponent. The pH is the negative log of H, which is defining the concentration or what this exponent is or power of the hydronium ion. pH values commonly missed it range from one to 14, although some very basic or acidic solutions may be out of that range. A pH of seven is neutral. Uh, pH values lower indicate acids greater or bases and seven is right on neutral again. All right, you don't need to worry about this. Um, hopefully you know by now that we have an acid existing in water. That's all that's basically saying. Yes, Judah. Um, not really, but on a, like an AP test, they could certainly be part of a question because it would be about acids and bases. And then it could say, what would happen if we added sodium bicarbonate? And then, yeah, you'd have to know it produced carbon dioxide, water, and then the, the, the salt. Yeah. I don't know. CS gas. Okay, it's not on the AP test, so I'm not going to cover that. Huh? That would be my It was. Okay, have you seen this before? All right, Bert stole it from me. Don't say it's Bert's. I will put a red marker on that nice white shirt. <laughs> no. I'll... Okay, I'm going to give anybody else a you that wants one. Feel free to speak up quick if you want one. Oh, that's dumb. There we go. For profaning my name. Okay. What what is this table trying to show you? The danger zone of this happening. Nope. It's trying to show you what it actually is. So um how the percent of All right. That's pretty close. It's trying to show you along the pH scale the relationship between, hold on, in a low pH or an acid, that the amount of H plus is huge compared to the amount of OH minus. Yes, John. Okay. It's trying to illustrate to you that in a base, the amount of H plus is a really small number and the OH is a really large number. It's trying to show you that when something's neutral, the concentrations are equal. So these really would have brackets around them. And these would be the relative concentrations of these ions in an acid and a base. So I got a question, never mind, Caitlin has one. What's milk of magnesia? Milk of magnesia is a medicine you take when your stomach doesn't feel good. And it's magnesium hydroxide, that's where the magnesia comes from. Your mom, she gives stuff out like it all the time. That's a little bit better, but it's magnesium hydroxide, milk of magnesia. It's white. That's why they call it milk. Plus your stomach acid. The OH bonds with the H. 
So we end up with MgCl2 plus we end up with HOH. So it essentially is a hydronium ion neutralizer or eliminator. It is cool. That's how any chewable or any liquid um, antacid works. It's the same chemistry. Tums is more calcium hydroxide. I don't know all the rest of them, but that's how those work. Now most, if you're someone like me that just refuses to eat good food, I take a pill and it, it works a whole different way. But this is, this is like a physical way to stop it quick. What? Like healthy. Right, I, I drink acid all day long. So it turns out I get heartburn. I don't, that's not on the AP test, so I'm not gonna cover it. Okay, the colors. No, Drano's super basic. Yes, sir. The colors are whatever you did the experiments, the other stuff. There you go. The colors are the, I don't know. They're the general colors that indicators turn in acids and bases. So generally, generally, there's an exception to everything in chemistry, but generally an indicator will turn a warm color in an acid. And generally it will turn a cold or cool color in a base. And then generally the greenish, that's, that's not, that's less general than this. But usually if it's green, it's around neutral. So we could, we could add an indicator. We could pretty quickly tell if we were dealing with an acid or base based on if it turned a warm or a dark color. Nisha first. So yeah, I have in the back, I have universal indicator. I have phenyl thaline, I have bromophenol blue. I have brom prestyl green. I have methyl orange. Uh, and a natural one you can use is red cabbage juice, which is something, that reacts. something that changes color if there's H plus or OH in excess. Okay. No, red cabbage juice, you like cut it up and you boil it and the water you pour off will act as an indicator. Cabbage honestly is slightly basic. That's why it tastes a little bit bitter. But it's when I say slightly, I mean it's like a 7.5. It's not much. Yeah, I have probably around a hundred indicators in the back. They're all powders, and I haven't ever used them, <laughs> but I have to inventory them. It's an entire container full. Um, but they're they're pretty interesting. So, like, if they didn't know what they were doing there, like in a safety situation, would they use an indicator to figure out if they had the warm or like the hydrogen? They could. They would probably not use a liquid indicator. They would put a piece of litmus paper in, like when you test your hot tub. Uh, you just dip that in and, like, oh, okay, well, that's a pH of whatever. So, liquid indicators are not, not as common, not as helpful. On Monday, make me. Remind me to put universal indicator in a solution and then I'll just add acid and base and we'll just watch it again. I think we did it, but we'll do it again so you can watch how it changes. All right. I think we're done, right? Are we out of here at 110? Okay, next week we do the, all the math. 